Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for them. This The Scare. This is season two, episodes five and six. Um, I'm going I'm to try to wrap this up, wrap up my recording at least. I feel like I don't want to drag it into next week. So we're going to sit down here and just roll through them. I'm going to roll through five and six. And then, I'm, of course, we're going to cut. We're going to cut. And come back for, for 7 and 8. Um, so that we can go ahead and wrap up the series. Let's get into it. So, Pastor is bringing the word. Mama Greer is in the congregation. She is convicted. She is just feeling very convicted. Um, meanwhile, it's the next morning. And Edmund Luke James. Wait a minute. Hold on, y'all. Because did I even... I did. <laughs> I was going to say, did I even talk about episode four? I did. But I guess I forgot some stuff. Did I forget some stuff? I don't know, guys. My brain is telling me, is, is making me feel like I forgot some details. And maybe I didn't, but because we're going to keep rolling. We're going to keep rolling and maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll work itself out. Anyway, so Pastor's bringing the word, like I said, Mama Greer. Did I tell y'all in the last one that, that, she, that she dropped the bomb on, um, on Dawn that she was um, adopted? Y'all, I don't... That might be the weed, and I maybe need to cut back because I really feel like I forgot to tell y'all that, but maybe I didn't. Anyway, um, and me, Edmund Lou James got Donovan um, crawling to his death. He done broke his leg. I did mention that. Now I'm remembering, now I'm remembering telling y'all bye. He done kidnapped this man. Anyway, he done, he, he, he broke his leg real bad arm broke everything is the one side is just completely um broken and Edmund is following him with this shovel like they're in the desert he's following him with this shovel and he just hits him up I mean when he hit him real 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 hard with that shovel it had a, he had a dent in his forehead um Donovan can still speak though and he's begging for his life he wants to live. You know, he's like, I'll do anything. And just when it seems like Edmund is going to have a moment where, you know, maybe he'll put it down. He picked that, picked that shovel up and basically turns it down like the, like, like the stabbing side. <laughs> and just really fucks him up. I mean, it's, it's bad. He bas I'm sure he like decapitated him. Then he just dropped the shovel. And I don't remember him having on a piece of glove. He left the shovel there. I'm just like, they're going to find you. They're going to find your ass. But he just drops the shovel, gets in his car, and leaves him there. Dawn, she's laid up with her gentleman caller. And um, he feels like she's become a bit distracted, you know. But she ain't going to talk about it. She's not going to be vulnerable with him. And she spent the night. She's like, I know I spent the night, but listen, I ain't going to do that to you ever again. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> she ain't the spend the night type, okay? She's trying to keep her boundaries, um, but he want to be her man. He would like to know what's going on with her emotionally. He would like to have those moments with her, but no. Mm -mm, she not feeling it's It's just not like that for her. And so he basically is just like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, it's been two years of this. Yeah, I want more. And if you're not... <sighs> you ever just get a, a message and it's just like... Anyway, 
Mama Greer, she um she talks to the pastor after church, feeling guilty, you know, for her lies. She says she's already paying for it now with her hands going bad on her like that. Pastor doesn't judge her. He's just like, listen, you know, pray and pray for forgiveness when you're praying. God, we, we serve a forgiving God. And so no judgment here for me, you know, pray for forgiveness. Um, Dawn, she is out having a Bloody Mary when um, she meets up with her, her new partner. And he feels like, you know, she's been acting a bit strange. He, she wearing shades in the building. She's been drinking a little more than usual. Um, and he they start talking about Detective Dusty Ass. And um, she's feeling like she can't really go into details with him. I don't know. She's not. I don't think she can really. I don't know if she feels like she can trust him because he is, you know. He is a man. <laughs> and, you know, like it is all of them against her. But anyway, he 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 says he's with her, you know, so they can press forward with the case. Um, he tells her about a case where this boy is being exercised and he feels like this may be in relation to the case, cases that they've been dealing with because this little boy is also seeing the man with the red hair. And um, it's been happening quite often. Nobody else can see this man with the red hair. And so Don and her partner, go they go visit with the boy. And um, he tells them, listen, that man want to kill me. I only see him in the mirrors. He mentions a brother who isn't present. And um, Don asked the mother about the brother. She only speaks Spanish. The brother, the, the little boy's name is Benito. And so we, we trying to figure out where his brother is. And she ain't really being cooperative. Um, and she says that this is a matter for the church, not the police. She's partially right because we're dealing, we're dealing with a demon here. Absolutely. Um, Benito gives her a piece of candy, though, on her way out. Mama, she ended up telling the partner that Benito's brother was sent back home to live with the relatives. Don, she can't get fact get past the fact that he had all those mirrors covered. So it's absolutely it, these things are connected. Edmund, we see him home packing his clothes. He finna hightail it out of there. You know he's on the run. He sees that raggedy Andy doll picks it up. You know it consoles him a little bit. Then he gets a call from DCF telling him that um, they found his sister. So he was looking for a long lost sister. He's just overcome with emotion and, you know, he can't even finish the call. He just, he can't even say nothing. Um, he gets dressed and pretends he's not crazy at all. Goes on over there to his sister's house. He bought a cake. And who is his sister? Don. Don is his sister. He goes to the door. Um, but of course, you know, it's, it, we're looking at it simultaneously. When she answers the door, it's not him. Um, it's um, her ex-husband, Iman. He answers the door. And um, Edmund, you know, he says that he's the new neighbor. And Iman just lets him inside. I'm like, you just let a stranger in your house? <sighs> anyway. <laughs> He's talking about make yourself at home. Anyway, Don comes downstairs. So he is at the right house. Don comes downstairs, and this is from 1989. So this was two years prior. Um, they meet, shake hands. He's introduced as a new neighbor. He talks about um, how he has twins, and they're inseparable. And while he's talking, Don is kind of reading her. She's kind of looking at him like he's, you know, so, yeah, so you lying about something. Um... And he's just amazed at how her life has turned out. He's just, he's being very weird in his wording, like in how he's speaking to her. I don't know why she hadn't picked up on, I think he might know me. Like he's, it, the, the energy is very, you, you got something you want to say? Yeah, but she don't never, you know, she doesn't pry or anything. She kind of feels like he's, there's something sinister going on. 
Um, and it's almost like he's kind of a little envious as well. Like, yeah, you, you had this great upbringing, you know, like, yeah, your mom really did you a solid. He asked her if she has siblings. Of course, she says she doesn't have any. And he's kind of crushed like, so you don't know about me? You don't remember me? Because he never forgot about her. <sighs> Don can tell that um, something isn't right. Um, and so she asked him who he bought the house from. That he say he moving into. Who who who's the buyer? Who who's the seller? Um, and then she asked if he works with his hands. Why he has scraped knuckles? Like she's been, she's on her detective, so she's just really grilling him. He say he was moving some boxes, and then he makes a comment about the um, family pictures being all in one place. You know, like on the mantle. Um. Kel, he brings out the cake. It's a birthday cake. And Edmund starts talking to her about um, her mother and how good she had it growing up. And she just immediately turns around and makes him, uh, you know, she frisks him. She, she, she searches his pockets. His ID checks out. So he is who he says he is. You know, she's like, what are you doing in this neighborhood? And with tears in his eyes. He says he just made one. He just made a mistake. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> Who? I guess when you're talking so much, you got to wet your whistle after a while. Anyway, he says he made a mistake. And um, on his way out, she tells him that she'll arrest him if, if, if she sees him back around there. Um, and he says that he's really happy for her. It was kind of... Mm. Damn, Edmund Lou James. You thought she was going to be reunited with your sister and she was going to be like, oh my God, Edmund. And she's like, and you are? Mm. Mm, that must have crushed. It's crushed him for real, for real. Edmund, he, he goes home and records some video diaries. And he says since he left her house, all he sees is blood. Whew. Edmund is obsessed, Okay. Um, he's obsessed with Raggedy Andy. He hears his voice talking to him and everything. Like, it's just starting to get weird. <laughs> it's starting to get really weird. Um, I think Raggedy Andy is like the voice in, the voices in his head. Like, it's, 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 it's mental, it's mental illness for sure. Um, and the voice is telling him that he's nothing. Fucking nothing. You're nothing. He covered in red yarn. Just sitting there crying. Anyway, Benito, he's still going through. And his granny, she think that the devil, um, she think it's the devil. And so she got the whole Spanish community out there. The whole Catholic church in the neighborhood. Everybody in, at the house praying, you know. And listen, lady, you right. You right to have everybody around there praying. Out of nowhere, the boy starts having a seizure Dawn, she isn't waiting. She's there. She's not waiting. So she just immediately grabs the boy up and she's going to take him to the hospital her damn self. While they in the car, child, man with the red hair gets him. Get some, get some good. I mean, they ain't even get to pull up to the hospital. He back there all contorted, mouth wide open and all of that. Then we see Edmund's video diary. You know, he's, he's, he's talking. We're, we're hearing his his little video diaries while this is happening. And um, he says he breaks all of her favorite toys. And I'm like, he just happens to be saying that while all the poor baby's bones are just broke, breaking. He doing witchcraft. He doing witchcraft. Anyway, let's get into episode six. So, Don is not okay. Um, she's in the backseat of the lieutenant squad car now. He needs ans answers. You know, what happened to this boy? She can't explain. She like, I don't know what happened either. Shit, I'm just driving. And then he just started doing what he doing. I didn't do it. <laughs> and he's very disappointed in her. Um, You know, she's the one. He's the one talking about who advocate. This is how this is how white folks do in jobs when they feel like, you know, you done embarrass them um, in front of their bosses. I, I, I stuck my I stuck my neck on the line for you. I'm the one who who advocated for you to have this position. 
And then this is what you do. You squander it. Now she done squandered the opportunity that she didn't even know was an opportunity. <laughs> he gonna tell her they gonna crucify you. And basically I ain't got nothing to do. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Sorry, Dawn. She ain't feeling the, the camaraderie. Okay. And I don't even know why you expected it. I don't even know why you expected it. Anyway, um, when she gets to internal affairs, they take her weapon, handcuff her and everything. They humiliate her, drug test her, all perp walk, everything. Um, Mama Greer, we see her being chastised by her boss because Mama Greer done got rid of all the <laughs> raggedy Andy dolls. She say, listen, we are not selling those here. It, it is rooted in racism, okay? And then Mama, the lady tell Mama Greer that um, she owes her an apology and that she just can't work with her anymore. So you don't care how it, how how this is offensive to the black community. You just don't care. You just gonna sell it anyway. The lady telling you, and you just like, it's just my store. You sell what I tell you to sell. You sell what is on the shelves and this on the shelves. I mean, she right about that still. Y'all could have came to a resolution. You could have at least heard her out. <laughs> you could have at least... Not, she was a little bit way way too dismissive about it for me. Um, she fires her on the spot, so that's that. Anyway, Dawn... It's fucking Cooper Sacks. Y'all already know he done been promoted to the IAB. He died over there in Power, Power Universe. Now he, got, he has a promotion here. Now he's a snitch. <laughs> Once a snitch, always a snitch. Fucking Cooper Sacks. Fuck him. I can't stand him, okay? Even in death. Anyway, he questioning her about the incident. They asking her about her time. When's the last time she had to use it? Then they show pictures of this man. From 18 months ago, she had to beat his ass with her baton. That, that was the last time she used it. So what are we what are we doing here? What are we saying here? We're trying to paint a picture? Oh, okay. Um, they also was in there questioning Detective Dusty Ass, Drunk Ass. His punk ass are in there lying on her, talking about she's been consistently harassing him and stalking him. Of course, she denies... All of that recent violent behavior. They asking her if she uses drugs. She says, no, girl, you was just smoking weed outside the man's house. You know that's in your system. Gots to be more careful. <laughs> you did smoke that blunt, sis. Uh, she say, listen, put me on the wire now. I'll do the lie detector test right damn now. Anyway, Kel, he at school. Everybody giving him dirty looks. Even his best friend, like, you really don't know what happened? You really don't know? I understand not wanting everybody to know that your mom's a cop, but hiding that she's a kid killer? I'm just like, bitch, you supposed to be his best friend. You know his mama ain't do that. You don't need her. You don't need her, Kel. You don't need her. You don't need none of them. They just gonna believe it. Anyway... They in class. And of course, for whatever reason, today is Drug Awareness Day. And so the LAPD is in there giving a, a after-school special on pot. You smoke that stuff, you lose all control. <laughs> it's funny how I smoked that shit just a few minutes ago. And I'm in total control. Thriving. Working hard. Doing my thing. Them people be lying. Them people know they be lying about the weed, okay? They they will lie. <laughs> they will lie. Anyway, um, Kel in class, high as hell, I believe. I think he was smoking. I think, I, I'm sure he smoked before he went to class. Because them folks be stressing him out. Anyway, um... He starts hallucinating. That voice is asking him if he if he's feeling all right. You all right? You know? You scared? And there's a mascot in there. He thinks that the voice is coming from the mascot, but the, it does that little 
<laughs> you know how in scary movies people face be doing that little twitch thing and then the TV does a little shaky snowy thing. That's what happened and then it was the man with the with the with the red hair. Um and he tries to ignore it, but the voice, listen, it's it's somebody if you want to play a game, touch your desk, touch your nose, touch your desk, touch your nose, touch your desk, tap the floor, tap the floor, tap the floor. Kill that kill down there crying. He has O C D, so it probably just appears like he's having some type of situation happen. Cause he's already like that. He already has his rituals, and so this is why Edmund in there playing these games with him. Um poor Kill. Just really making him do all these, you know, all this OCD like behaviors. Um back in court, Dawn, she in there taking her lie detector test. And um, of course the questions are not making her look good. She's being honest, but they're they're word the questions and the way that they're wording them is still just to make her look bad. <sighs> She's had contact with all the victims prior to their deaths. Now we're going to paint a picture like she's just the one doing all of this. Um, when it comes to the first victim, she did not have prior contact with her. They asked her if she's ever spent time over there at Miss, at Miss Bernie's house. And uh, when she was a kid, she says no. She don't remember, but she has. She has. Um, her partner was also privy to this. And he said, I tried to get her to recall it when we was out there at the, at the, at the thing, but she ain't by debate. Um, they asked her if she was adopted. She, of course, gets emotional on the stand because she just found that out. Um, when she get outside, her mom outside waiting on her. She, she don't got nothing for dying. Nothing for, give me the keys. She taking the keys now. Now she going to treat you like an elderly woman because she mad at you. So she going to take your car keys. What's next? She going to take your license. <laughs> she going to take your license next. Okay. You ain't going to be able to be driving nowhere. Um, at dinner, she violently cuts her steak because she is pissed. <laughs> Mama Greer, she trying to keep the peace, trying to change the subject to Kel and his upcoming performance and all of that. And then Don interrupts. She's talking about, oh, and I need your license too. <laughs> your car is a crime scene so you know if you need it let me know where you need to go um kale defends his grandma like why are you being like that towards grandma like she didn't do anything and don is like Aha! she didn't well i'm gonna tell you since she ain't tell you <laughs> i'm like girl you're too old to be this mad about that like i get being disappointed you know but in the grand scheme of it all was it a bad situation no. <laughs> you have to think about what situation you probably might have been in. Think about that. Um, Don trying to judge her mama. You know, mama gets in that ass because it was me that raised you. It was me that took you up out of that place. It was me. I gave you a better life. I'm the one sacrificed and raised you by my damn self. So you show me some goddamn respect. Show Mama Grizz some respect. Don't you play. Don't play with it. She said, I provided a good life for you for the past 30 years. Don, she's still being real nasty to her mama, you know. And she needs to apologize. Kel tell her that too. You need to apologize to, to Grandma. Talking to her like that. <laughs> and then, he don't hold nothing back. Then he tell her she the problem. You know, you the problem. You done left daddy. <laughs> for what you blame daddy for the divorce but you know he was there for me he's been there for me you're the one that worked late nights and you're never home here to raise me do homework with me take me to prom take me to get a pair of shoes none of that that's you not daddy daddy been the one present you the one always missing I'm talking about going to work was you really going to work all them nights Mm-hmm. didn't think so he already knows she was out here outside doing what she was doing. Okay. She was, she was probably smashing that man that she was just humping on saying for the past two years they've been doing this. Yeah. That's who she was with. Um, and he's safe in the league. He ain't got nothing else to say to her and don't think about coming to my show, bitch. 
He ain't say all that. <laughs> he ain't say all that. Anyway, it's showtime. Uh, baby, Kel is high as a kite. High as a kite. Um, Dawn comes anyway, you know, because Mama's going to do that anyway. She, she, she there. Um, and he's distracted. And, of course, in the middle of the show, he starts hallucinating. Here come the man with that red hair. Okay, he's in his head. Don is watching him, so she's noticing that he's starting to act we act strange. He's bumping into people. Now he's just standing and play marching time, um, playing the drums. And in his hallucinations, the man with the red hair is just like getting closer and closer, running up on him. And um he finally, you know, gets gets real close up to his face, the child on the floor, he seizes. And everything. And you know. Then when he comes to. He's like. Something is wrong with me. Don just holds her baby. In the middle of the court. She know what's going on. She know what's going on. Alright. Let me cut this. Give me. I'm going to make me some OT. And I'm going to come right back. For. um To wrap up. Seven and eight. Alright. Be sure to rate. Comment. And subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby. Peace and light.